Hey there! Today, we're going to talk about two cities that are both synonymous with the tech industry, both alike in more ways to count, yet completely different. Today, we're going to compare San Francisco with Seattle to try to understand what it's like living in each. Of course, let me know which city you would like to live in. Just make sure to stick around for the entire video, so that way I can tell you how these cities stack up against each other, and to answer the question, which city is the better city? So please smash that like and subscribe button, and without further ado, let's start the video. To start off this list, we're first going to talk about geography and climate. The first and most major difference between these two cities is their geography and climate. While San Francisco is in the 37th parallel, which puts it at about the same latitude as southern Spain or Italy, Seattle sits further north at the 47th parallel, which is the same as northern Switzerland. This difference in latitude comes with many climactic differences. San Francisco is known for its Mediterranean climate with mild winters and warm summers. In San Francisco, the yearly temperature range varies from 47 degrees to 71 degrees, and San Francisco gets about 259 sunny days per year, with an average of 68 rainy days per year. It's pretty much perfect for outdoor activities all year round. Meanwhile, Seattle has a temperate climate with cool weather year round, except during the short summer months. The average yearly Seattle temperature ranges from 37 to 74 degrees, and Seattle gets equal amounts of sun and rain with 152 sunny days per year and an average of 150 rainy days. So while Seattle is cooler and rainier, this means that as a general rule, the Seattle area is much greener than Northern California and has denser vegetation. Otherwise, despite Seattle's reputation as a depressing city with no sun, both cities actually suffer from a lack of sun. In San Francisco, this often comes in the form of fog from the Pacific Ocean, which can block the sun for large portions of the day. Meanwhile, in Seattle, the coastal air brings in dense cloud cover, which can sit in the area for weeks at a time. While it can be cozy and makes for some great photos, it can also get a little tiring in the winter months when most of what you see is gray. Overall though, San Francisco gets much more sun than Seattle, even if the bay does get a lot of fog. One thing to note about each city though is that both have many hills. The highest natural point in San Francisco is Mount Davidson at 938 feet, and the highest point in Seattle is the High Point neighborhood at 520 feet. Though both have dramatic elevation changes throughout, both were formed through very different means. San Francisco is the result of the Pacific Plate meeting the North American Plate, which helped create California's coastal mountain range. Meanwhile, Seattle's elevation changes are the result of glaciers during the last ice age. While these hills make navigating both cities slightly harder, they also provide both cities many great vantage points and help give them both variety. All in all, if I had to rate both cities, I would give San Francisco the edge on the best climate. It's just all round a pleasant climate to live in no matter the season. It's a solid 8 out of 10, while Seattle is more so a 7 out of 10. Next, let's talk about the people of both cities. Both San Francisco and Seattle have similar population sizes, and both have seen a population decline since 2020. San Francisco is the larger of the two with a population of 815,000, down 6% 6 since 2020. Meanwhile, Seattle has a population of 733,000, only down 0.2% compared to 2020. Of those in San Francisco, 38% are white, 37% are Asian, 15% are Hispanic or Latino, 5% are black, and another 5% are mixed race. And the remaining percent are comprised of Native American and Pacific Islanders. Also, outside of English, the second most popular language in San Francisco is Chinese, where 17% of the population speak fluently. In Seattle, 62% of the population are white, 16% are Asian, 8% are mixed race, 7% are Hispanic or Latino, 7% are black, and the remaining percent are comprised of Native American and Pacific Islanders. Meanwhile, in Seattle, the second most popular language is a tie between Spanish and Chinese, with roughly 4% of the population speaking each. So in general, San Francisco has more diversity, but both cities are actually equal on their political views. While Seattle has a higher percentage of voters who voted Democrat in 2020 at 88%, San Francisco wasn't far off with 85% of the vote for the Democratic Party in 2020. 
Although this likely doesn't surprise many people because the entire West Coast is known for its more liberal and democratic views. Otherwise, outside of numbers, both cities have different histories which helps give them a different culture. San Francisco was first settled by the Spanish in the late 1700s who came to set up missions, and then it grew during the California Gold Rush, and later grew due to agriculture and the tech industry. Because of San Francisco's climate and Spanish heritage, you'll see a lot of Mediterranean style buildings and it still contains a little bit of that rustic western feel. Seattle, meanwhile, was first settled by the Coast Salish people, then pioneers came in from the logging industry, and the city grew during the Klondike Gold Rush as a point of embarkation. Finally, just like San Francisco, the tech industry came in and has been causing continuous growth in the area. Instead of a Spanish heritage, Seattle owes a lot of its culture to the Native American tribes who lived in the area. Throughout the city you'll find totem poles and native art decorating the city. Overall, Seattle has a more rugged and wild feel to it, partially because it's surrounded by some of the largest wilderness areas in the USA. All in all, you really can't compare the culture of the two areas, but more than anything else these days, both are known for the tech industry. For better or worse, San Francisco and Seattle have a high number of tech bros per capita. And it's these tech companies in both cities which have been dominating the local culture in the past couple years. So while both cities have rich histories, they're both very tech-centric cities. So if I were to rank each, they would actually have an equal rating. Is Seattle and San Francisco known for their out of this world, crazy good, fast and efficient transportation? No. That being said, though on an international scale, Seattle and San Francisco don't have the best transportation, they do have good transportation options for the USA. Each city has a rail system, buses, streetcars, and bike lanes, plus the rail lines in each allow you to travel outside of the city. For San Francisco, the Bay Area Rapid Transit or BART system covers around 130 miles of track, and in Seattle, the Link Light Rail covers 25 miles with plans to cover 40 miles in 2023. That being said, in terms of the distance you could travel using public transportation, San Francisco has Seattle B. But Seattle also has its very own ferry system, which can turn a two hour drive into a 15 minute ferry ride. Overall, though both cities have similar topographies and both have similar types of transportation, I would have to say that Seattle has San Francisco B in terms of your ability to go from point A to point B. While both have trains, streetcars, and buses, Seattle's system can generally get you across the city much faster. Part of this is because Seattle has less population to move around. This by default makes it easier to get around because you have less traffic to worry about and you won't have to deal with as many crowds. In addition, Seattle has been aggressively expanding the rail and streetcar systems in the past couple years. Seattle public transportation actually hit an all-time high record in September 2022. It might not be the best transportation in the world, but if you need to, you can cheaply go about anywhere in the city. You can also go just about anywhere using San Francisco's public transit, but unless you're taking the BART, you'll have to deal with a lot of traffic. For reference, the Seattle metro area has about 2.25 million people, while the Bay Area has over 7 million residents. Because the Seattle area has less people than the Bay Area, there's naturally less traffic, so both drivers, streetcars, and buses will have less people to compete with to go from point A to point B. That being said, both cities still have good public transportation. They're not the best in the nation, but good enough so you don't really need a car to get around town. And finally, before someone calls me out on this, yes, the traffic is bad in both cities. Although slightly less bad in Seattle. Overall, Seattle gets a 6 out of 10 for its ease of transportation, and San Francisco gets a 5 out of 10. Seattle and San Francisco have two iconic downtowns. San Francisco has the iconic Transamerica Pyramid, the Bay Bridge, the Golden Gate Bridge, Salesforce Tower, and Coit Tower all on its skyline. It's one of the most recognizable skylines in the world. Plus, it has the tallest downtown in the West Coast, with over 470 high-rises and 56 skyscrapers at least 400 feet tall. Even outside of downtown, the many hills around the city help give San Francisco its height. Meanwhile, Seattle has a smaller downtown, but it still has some notable landmarks that are part of its skyline. The most iconic feature of Seattle's downtown is the Space Needle, Smith Tower, and perhaps even Mount Rainier. 
Yes, Mount Rainier is 100 miles away, but ask any true Seattle resident and they'll agree that Mount Rainier is a vital part of the skyline. That being said, Seattle has a much smaller downtown compared to San Francisco, with only 117 high-rises and 56 skyscrapers over 400 feet. So San Francisco definitely takes the cake for the more recognizable downtown. Both also have great waterfronts. Seattle has Pike Place and Miner's Landing, while San Francisco has Fisherman's Wharf. Personally, I prefer Pike Place, but in general, there is a little bit more to do along San Francisco's waterfront. In summary, San Francisco would get an 8 out of 10 for its downtown. It's super iconic and beautiful. Meanwhile, Seattle would get a 7 out of 10. It's also a great downtown, but not quite as iconic as San Francisco. I really like both, but San Francisco just has more to see and do. Next, let's talk about the cost of living. Here, San Francisco comes out on top as the third most expensive city in the USA. But don't worry, Seattle is also on that top 10 list. It just sits a little lower at 9th place. So what does this mean in terms of money? Well, if you make $100,000 in Seattle, then you'll need at least $125,000 in San Francisco to keep your current lifestyle. This difference is primarily driven by housing costs, with San Francisco housing 57% more expensive than Seattle housing. If you make $100,000 in Seattle, you'll get to keep around $77,000 of it after income tax. Meanwhile, in San Francisco, if you make $100,000, you'll take home about $71,000 of it after tax. This means that in addition to being 25% more expensive, in San Francisco, you'll also pay more in income tax than if you're living in Seattle. So if we take income tax into account, you'll need roughly $137,000 in San Francisco to maintain the lifestyle of someone making $100,000 in Seattle. If it makes you feel better though, you're essentially paying for better weather and climate, so it kinda evens out. Comparing the cost of living and assigning a rating is actually probably one of the easiest between the two. Seattle is a solid 5 out of 10. It's expensive, but the lack of an income tax kinda evens it out to a middle level. Meanwhile, San Francisco is a solid 3 out of 10. And that actually concludes our list! To summarize, overall, San Francisco had a better climate with an 8 out of 10 score while Seattle had a 7 out of 10. In general, if you like outdoor activities or like getting sun or just being outside, San Francisco will be much more pleasant Seattle's also very good, but it does get kind of dark throughout the winter months and you will deal with a lot of rain. So I'd say for most people, San Francisco has the better climate and Seattle would really only be considered better if you like cooler weather or more rain. In culture, both cities actually got a 6 out of 10 and it should be no surprise because both are very focused on tech and have very similar cultures overall. They're probably some of the most culturally identical cities anywhere in America. Next, we have transportation, where Seattle got a 6 out of 10 and San Francisco got a 5 out of 10. Overall, both cities have alright public transportation, they have better than the American average, but in general, if you factor in the ability to commute or drive from one side to the other, Seattle does have the advantage, mostly because it's in an area with less population. If you want to use public transportation, both are probably equal, but if you want to drive, I would much rather drive throughout Seattle than San Francisco any day. Second to last, we have the downtown, and here, San Francisco got a solid 8 out of 10. It has an iconic downtown, some of the most famous buildings in the world, and overall, it's just really beautiful. Meanwhile, Seattle does have an iconic downtown too, with the world-renowned Space Needle, but you could probably agree with me, San Francisco definitely takes the cake, it has more iconic buildings. Seattle has a great downtown too, but it's not as iconic as San Francisco's. And finally, we have cost. And here, Seattle definitely is the obvious choice as the better city for your wallet. San Francisco is known as the one of the most expensive cities in the world and likely won't slow down in price enough for Seattle to ever become more expensive. Seattle is just a cheaper city to live in with less taxes and just an overall lower cost of living. But with the final numbers in, if we sum everything up, San Francisco gets an overall score of 30, and Seattle beats San Francisco out by one point with a score of 31. The main thing that made the difference was the fact that Seattle is in general just a cheaper city to live in. So you get a bigger bang for your buck. You might not get as good weather, and you might not have the coolest downtown, but hey, 
everything else is just about on par with San Francisco, plus you get a little more money in your wallet at the end of every month. So that's it! Do you agree with me? Let me know down in the comments. This video was very subjective, but I've lived in both cities, so I feel like my opinion does have some validity. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you stick around to watch more, or subscribe, or just comment down below. With that, I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.